right. What's up, everybody out there in YouTube land? It's me, Erica, and I'm painting solo today. Because Jeff is working on a mural in Deep Ellum and I got tired of working on like my lip paintings and decided that I wanted to do a pour. No telling whether it's going to turn out right or not, but you know what? Yellow. And there's no one here to tell me that yellow is out because yellow. All right, got my sippy sippy. It's after five by like 10 minutes. So don't judge me. I was going to use Envirotex, but I have like none. So I'm going to use countertop epoxy. And it's been a while since I've done a solo pour. So we're going to see how this goes because I am not 100% sure how much resin he usually uses. But I do know that he came up with this ingenious idea where he marked this stick for, I don't know, and for this 10 by 10 canvas so that I can measure it appropriately. So at least, Jeff is here in spirit. So, um, funny thing happened to me just now. They're filming, um, I don't know if you know the TV show False Prophets, but uh, it's so thick. That's what she said. But no, really, I should have warmed this up. Maybe I'll still do that. Um, that show False Prophets, they're filming it in the lobby of our loft building and I went in the elevator to go down and take Cujo out. And apparently they had just called um, action and I ruined it because the elevator was loud and then I was loud and I didn't know they were filming. And basically I just ruined a take, but now I feel like I'm part of the show. So I'm gonna have to watch it now. Also Cujo is a big hit, so. Basically, I'm in the movie. I mean, the show. Yeah, the show. Except for not really, because you guys know I exaggerate slightly, if not all the time. And I forgot the hardener was thinner. Came out faster. You would think the hardener would be thicker, but not the case. I know you guys have heard me say a billion, billion times to make sure that you're measured it evenly and how important it is. But I always have to reiterate because if you use too much hardener, your working time is going to decrease. If you use too much resin, it may never set. I've had that happen. It sucks so bad. I waited for, I'm not kidding, two weeks before I gave up on this one piece. I did everything in the world I could for that piece and it's still never, never really um, got it together. So I had to scrape it off and I ultimately threw the canvas away, which hurts my soul because I mean, if you've ever purchased a canvas, you know how expensive they are. They don't seem expensive, and then you waste a couple in a row on a bad pour, and then you're like, yep, gotta be more careful now, because running low and don't have money to get more. That's happened to me. Like on that acrylic pour video, we've already poured over that, by the way, because it was so, <laughs> so bad. By the way, thank you for all the tips. I think um, the main consensus was that I, it's like molasses. Basically the problem was that we made the paint too thin, which makes sense that it would run together if it was too thin, cause duh. 
and I forgot that we should use GAC, which didn't really matter because we didn't complete the piece anyways, so. But you live and learn, it's whatever. Also, thank you to everybody who has sponsored our channel. We're going to do a special giveaway for you guys at the beginning of April. Please, no one feel obligated to send us anything or to donate to our channel. Um, that's just for the people that have asked how to, to contribute. And we appreciate every Venmo, every PayPal. Um, but it's completely not necessary. We post to this channel because we're going to do art anyways. And why not share our secrets? I don't know if y'all know this, but when we first started doing this, um, I asked so many resin artists for help to get tips and tricks and all that with resin and, you know, maybe, I don't know, not necessarily for secrets, but basically for secrets, I guess. I didn't know they were secrets, but apparently resin artists like to keep their tools under lock and key, the tricks of the trade. I kind of feel like that magician that reveals secrets of how to do like the magician's code or whatever, because I feel like I should share how we make certain pieces of artwork. Cause why not? I can't even recreate my own artwork, let alone someone else's artwork. And if you're really afraid that I'm gonna do it better then Maybe you should be better yourself. I don't know. That's just my take on it. Why not share the knowledge? So that's why we like to post everything. The fails, the victories, because you either win or you learn. There's no fails, really. Except for if you're me and wanting to do an acrylic pour. In that case, failure is definitely an option. I'm just pouring this back into the other cup to make sure since it's so such a thick mixture that I've mixed it thoroughly and completely because if you don't you may end up with a weak spot that won't set ever which is almost more frustrating than an entire piece that doesn't set. So make sure you scrape the sides and the bottom and your stir stick often to make sure you have a complete <sighs> cramp. Oh, I ordered, um, I gotta show you guys, hold on. I ordered a one of these that you could like turn on and it's a little tea tiny mixer. It's for mixing airbrush paints together, but I'm gonna use it for resin. However, I didn't know the batteries were not included, so we're gonna have to wait on that. All right, all these tiny bubbles, 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 they will, we'll burn them out with the, the heat gun. You can use a heat gun or a torch, makes no matter um, to get bubbles out. I, I'm a fan of the heat gun. Some people say they're scared of the torch and the heat gun is safer. I'm here to tell you not so. I've never burned myself with a torch, but this is this. So that was a fun day. I'll link the video here. Boink, doink, doink. I'm trying to do a video where I don't do any subtitles that's all 100% vocal. So forgive me if I'm rambling extra, extra much. Hope I don't overwhelm anyone with e-science today. All right, so I'm doing a pour similar to the giveaway colors pour. I haven't used Mayron in a couple minutes and I love this stuff. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Dang it. So, I want to make sure I get 
some May Ronin in this. All right, we're just gonna re-divvy these. I haven't really thought any of this out other than what colors I wanna use. I haven't thought about how much like amount wise I wanna do. So we're gonna, we're gonna yellow this together. So the first color I'm gonna use, I'll link all of the materials, tools, colors, pigments, et cetera, in the description box below. But the first color we're using is a Pearlex by Jacquard. It's a pigment powder, it's gorgeous, and who doesn't like purple? So we're gonna do two stick balls, nope, two, um, I don't know what you would call this measurement, but that's how much we're using on that. The next color is magenta. Nope, I don't want to use this. And the reason why I don't want to use that one is because maybe I do actually. I use magenta a lot, and on the last one, the giveaway one, it was an ink. So this one, we're just going to use a pigment powder. This one is also a Perlex by Jacquard. And we use the same amount, two stick bowls. Eh. Kanye shrub. Uh, the next one I'm using is also by Jacquard, but it's a textile color. I've never used this, and I've never used this so hard that it's still sealed. I've had it for a few days, but have yet to have the pleasure. Ooh, it's thick. That's what she said. I need to get over that. We'll see. So <laughs> this is, I don't know about this. I'm scared. It's like, it's a really textile color for natural or synthetic fibers. Uh, well, we're just gonna have to mix this in a little bit. It looks like it's got the consistency of a really thick like cappuccino foam. Alright, we're going to use this one in this not so much amount because I'm not sure what it'll do and I don't want it to ruin the piece. Um, the next one is the Bombay ink in the color aqua because who doesn't like a good tealy aqua in their pieces. So we're going to, I don't know why I just did that like that amount is going to make a difference in anything at all. We're gonna do two droppers of that. And then we're gonna do my favorite and yours. We're gonna drop some Mayron into this. Let's do extra, extra, read all about it. Okay, so we're gonna do two stickfuls of Mayron, and then the last color is going to be this Cast and Craft Opaque Pigment Concentrate. I really like this because it's like an effortless cell situation every time I use it. And actually, I want to keep just a little bit of clear on the side, but it's too late now. It's whatever. So we're just going to squirt a little bit of that in there. All right, that is the color palette for today's offerings. Hopefully they mix into this well since it's, it's not cold here, but it's not warm either. It's definitely not 70, 75, so I should have known better and warmed up the, uh, for this to be an ink, it's really opaque. Maybe I should have only done one dropper. Live and learn. I really hope this blue doesn't turn into marshmallow fluff because it's such an odd consistency. But that color is really vibrant. It's the only not metallic, metallic? Nope. Metallic paint other than the, uh, the white and the ink. So we're gonna see how that turns out. 
I like having a contrast between, um, I should mix that up more. I like having a contrast between shimmer and not shimmer tints in some of my work. It just gives an interesting look, I think. Might be just me. What do you think? Do you like it when pieces are like half and half? Not half and half, but like a mixture of shimmer versus non-shimmer, or would you prefer it if it was like, ooh, that's gorgeous. Or do you prefer it to be either an all metallic or an all not metallic situation? All right, you guys, when you use pigment powders, it's usually a good rule of thumb to just drop some, um, the powder into your resin first and then mix in the resin because that way you don't have all this color flying out at you. This is gorgeous. It's got like a purple sheen to it. That way when you start to mix it, it doesn't like all the powder. But you know what? I don't always do things by the book, so it is what it is. May Ron, you never disappoint me. Sippy, sippy. So now that we have our colors all mixed up, we're going to, oops, see, that's what happens. But that's not a problem because we don't have any expectations for this piece. So whatever happens, just happens. Just happens. I like to put down a little bit of clear, that's a lot of clear, before um, I lay down my color so that they, move across the surface of the canvas more easily, especially when the resin's a little bit thicker, like it is here, here. Where's my this? There it is. I would also like to give special thanks to Miss Judy for sending me, I don't know what it's called. Um, you know those things that go, action and it has like all the takes and stuff she was kind enough to send me one of those and I told Jeff I wouldn't use that till he was here because it's gonna get on his nerves and I cannot wait he's one of the funnest people to annoy y'all he's really not grumpy he's just he's just a little bit dry sometimes all right here's my this we always keep a rag handy that has some alcohol on it, Erica her, um, alcohol, that way it just, it's easier to not get everything sticky. Also, you can use some baby wipes. All right. I like to heat up the resin that I have laid down just to make sure it's good to receive all the other colors I'm about to lay on it. That sounded really graphic. Whatever. So I think we're going to do a Jeff style puddle pour. Let's start with green. And then a gold because green and gold look amazing together. If you guys haven't tried this Mayron, I don't know what you're doing with your life. I, it was a happy accident that I stumbled upon using it because I um, I just accidentally grabbed it instead of our, our Jacquard pigment powder. And I just decided why not just go with it. And we did, and it's great. So it's not that expensive. They have a whole bunch of different colors. They don't pay me to say this. So... If you get a chance, you should totally try it. I'll link everything in the description box below. But this is a fun palette. I wonder how it's gonna turn out because last time we did these colors, there were inks and these are definitely a lot thicker than that. They're very opaque. 
even the teal ink that I used is pretty opaque, so we'll see. I don't know why we like Puddle Pour so much, but it's definitely one of my favorite methods of pouring. Are we good with that? Are we good? I don't know. Are we, are we are, are we aren't? Let's do just some green and then we'll heat and tilt. Adding heat pops the bubbles and also changes the surface tension when it thins out the resin and makes all the awesome happen. You can see the gold pop up in different areas. I really hope this turns out amazing because these colors look fabulous. Do you guys do artwork? Do you guys do pours? What's your favorite type of pour? Is it puddle pours or are you more flip cuppy type people? Or are you more deliberate with your This is very like rainbow brightish. Definitely gonna need to do something to switch this up a little bit. Colors are good though. I'm happy with those. Nope. Look how gorgeous that looks. That's something I really like about this gold. Usually the white is what sells the most, but here lately I'm finding that this, um, this gold does crazy stuff. In fact, I'm gonna add a dirty pour just right into this piece because I do what I want. And who doesn't like a dirty pour from time to time? Even though I definitely messed up my last piece. It is what it is. Let's see what this does first though. I kind of wish I did the whole piece in this gold and green we got going on right here. Check that out. I hope it's focusing. I can't tell. I hate wasting resin. The idea of it makes me want to throw up. Why not pour it into this cup? Because that's not pretty. That's why. All right. That's basically exactly what I wanted. This ribbon look is something I, I'm all, like my eye is always drawn to, which is why I like dirty pores. So let's just complete the ribbon on this side, even though I don't know what it, that's gonna look like. Beautiful for no reason, it's just in a cup.
forgot all about that side. This purple has basically disappeared. We may have to just add some in over the top. When you're using any heat of any kind, don't leave it on any spot for too long because it will scorch your resin. It'll make it bubble up kind of, and it's just so not a good look. Just be mindful of that. Oh my goodness, you guys. I'm so loving this piece right now. Just a little bit bummed about the purple disappearing, but it is what it is. I'll just put some over here. Bam, purple in your face. Who doesn't like purple in my face? Nobody, that's who. So I need to finish out this edge. Oh, and I had some people ask about the edges. Most of my clients really like the live edge look. Also, I ended up making a couple tiles with my leftovers. Kind of dipped in right there, so it's going to need a top coat, but that Mayron definitely gives a whole new look to resin artwork. Who knew putting body paint into resin would make something so unique? Anyways, thanks you guys for watching. See you later.